Grandma, you rock. And we're live. Yes. yes, you can. Can you hear me? Yeah. Should I, I speak louder? Jess, it says this video. I, I can't hear anything. Last time we used your headphones. Yes. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Go, go, go. Keep talking. Say something. Okay. Welcome home. Can you hear Greg? She's not talking. Mom, just keep talking. Welcome home. Talk, talk louder. Jess, why would the earbuds not be working? I don't know. Tony, you know what? I have a pair, I think. Then we're safe. Then we're safe. That's what we need. You have saved our lives. Guys, we're all experimenting. Yes. And I'm the least. Joey, you are going to have to do this because you're going to have to be close yes. to Grandma. Um. Then I'm we have. Good. Then we have to take that earbud out. Jess, can you speak into there and tell them we're just setting up the sound? We are just setting up the sound. Sorry for the wait, everybody. Do I speak? Yes. Just keep talking, Mama. Greg is going to tell us Can you hear me? Because I can't hear talking. myself. Keep talking. Keep talking. Okay, I cannot hear myself. Because my hearing... Around. It Don't works. Really okay. Okay. Then let me begin. First of all, welcome all of you. I think... I think in a few years we'll have mastered it. Can you hear me well? Okay. Oops, Joni, I dislodged it. I shouldn't... Put it back in your ear. I shouldn't clap my hands. <laughs> Can you still hear me? Yes. Yeah? Okay. First of all, we're going to change things. I was realizing that since I begin always with the drawings I'm doing for Harvey Wiesenberg about people with special needs, I'll begin with a drawing that I did. I am in a position now where what I love doing is not going to be possible if I cannot be near people. I find that if I draw people whom I don't see, the quality is not good because my heart doesn't go out to it. And so I'm going to show you one I did when I was allowed to go among human beings. And I did this of a little boy who had been so ridiculed at work that he stopped speaking. Can you photograph him? Give it to me. And Harvey had made it possible for me 
to go to all the residences. And I went to AHRC and I drew him. And then he broke my heart. And then they had a Seder. And I went to the Seder. And he was sitting there. And he was able to speak. And he made the blessing. And I said to the people at AHRC, How? And they said, It's what we do here. And I was thinking, I think where we are going now with the Black Lives Matter, where I also want police to matter, and I want everybody to matter, I will begin to speak of including. And the next thing, the next picture I'm going to do, Jesse is going to help me because he has photographs. We went to a reunion of children who were adopted from Cambodia. And one lady walked in with her little boy in a wheelchair. And his name was Chaz. And when she walked in, the music was playing. And so many of the youngsters came running over to Chaz. And they began to dance with the wheelchair. They grabbed the wheelchair and danced with it. And Chaz was laughing. He was so overjoyed and they were so overjoyed. And I thought, that's what I'm going to do from the meantime. I'm going to show inclusion because we do not do it. Instead of saying you should do, we're going to do it. And I will show that in my drawings. I spoke to Harvey. And I spoke to Susan Russo, and I spoke to, who also, they're sort of a model family in my mind. When their little Teresa was born with severe cerebral palsy, the whole family took care of her. They were told, put her into an institution. She'll ruin your lives. But they knew that was wrong. And so the Russo children were always playing together and growing up together. And Susan is going to send me photographs of when they are together. And I'm going to do a series of work. And I also, when I spoke to Harvey's daughter, Vicky, I discussed it and I said, let's change the system. Let's show not the children alone being taken care of, but let's show communities. Let's change how we see people who have suffered by including them instead of isolating them. And I really think it comes to me because Harvey and other friends of mine, there's an airplane. Wait a minute until it goes away. While you're waiting for the airplane to go away, Ellen Snyder Grenier, who is the person who wrote The House on Henry Street, is watching you. And Mary Lou Bilgrace de Rodriguez is watching, our relative from Panama. Yes. Yes. And so from now on, what I would like to do, because I spent the time up to now telling you stop prejudice. Let me stop for a little while with that and let me tell you how amazing our species is. We have done so much. And I'm go I had begun a long time ago the, th the thought of doing a book about the people I've met during my paintings who do incredible things. Since I'm not going to write a book because somebody invented Facebook, I can do because you hear me. I want to start speaking of how far we have come year by year. As Obama once said, in which century would you have wanted to be born? And it is this one. 
I would like to tell you first that during one of my worst times, that would have been when I was eight years old and we were hiding in our apartment from Hitler's people. And my terror and my brother's terror and my parents' terror was if they find us, they will separate us. And when I realized that here in America, we're taking children away from their families and putting them into cages and putting them into institutions, we pay to keep them imprisoned. My heart underwent terrible pain. And it was at that time that I got a message from Susan La Rosa from the Henry Street Settlement. Would I be willing to do a cover of their book? Not a book, but for their yearly report. And I did. And when I found out about the Henry Street Settlement, I thought, this is like what we're going through now. We don't allow refugees in. But there was a woman who wanted to be a nurse. And I've told you her story already. But I didn't tell you that suddenly a book would be written which has the soul of the Henry Street Settlement. And the I couldn't. writer is on your face. She's listening to you right now. Yes. Yes. The Henry Street Settlement was, this is the first book that I read because they let me read so many articles, but nobody captured what the Henry Street Settlement is. And there is a woman who I believe is listening tonight. She is. She is she there? She is. Wonderful. Her name is Three Names, Ellen M. Snyder Grenier. But I took the liberty of calling her Ellen because her book means so much to me. You see, it's why I no longer want to do anybody whom I cannot see. Something happens when you are with a building or a person they speak to you and since I am now in quarantine and can't be with anybody I have to thank her because when you read this book you will be there so Ellen thank you and be in touch with me because I want to make people understand that we can change the world. And you understood that in the story of Lillian Wald. Thank well, you. Can I interrupt for a second yes. to um, read some comments? I'd love it. Beautiful. So Vicki Laufer says, hello. Wait, wait, speak loudly because I'm not wearing my hearing aids. Vicki Laufer says, hello, beautiful Hetty, love you. Speak louder, please. <laughs> but we fixed that problem. Um, Vicki is wonderful. She's going to work with me on showing inclusion. And she says, you look beautiful tonight in, perf in purple. And uh, Susan LaRosa says, hi, Hetty. Oh, she's there. And Hardev Mangat says, you are a great genius person. And Wendy Kubadanka says, Hetty was my teacher growing up, and she has been my inspiration forever. She's my friend now, and I'm blessed to have her in my life. I love her. And Lorraine says, Hetty, I know you know the love and respect I have for you. Don't ever forget it. And Michelle says, hello, Hetty. And Joe Tripp says, hi, Hetty. And Ellen, the author of this book, says, Hetty, I am overwhelmed. And yes, we can. Thank you so much. And Wendy says, you are changing the world. And Lorraine asked, Hetty, how did you decide to paint miniatures? Is this the correct terminology? Do you ever paint in another style? 
And do you know what your next project will be? And then another person comments that your shirt looks more pink than purple to her on her phone. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I, you know, I have a friend named Martha Bilsky, who's a wonderful writer and a poet. And many, many years ago, when I began this painting business, she said, I know what you're doing. You decided to change the world and you decided to do it in the medium you know how to use best. I'm doing it, you're right. Thank you. Because until she said that, I didn't realize that I need to change the world. Okay. And do you want us to show your I want to talk about this. Should we put it on the easel? Let's put it on the easel. To explain why this book means so much to me, I called Susan and I said, Susan, I don't know how to describe this. Whoop, there go my hearing aids. Oh. <laughs> put them back in, Mom. Just like that? Just put them right back in. <laughs> Squeeze them into your ear canals. Can you hear me? Joni? Yes. Can you point out the different things in the painting? Yes. But first of all, can all of you hear me? Wait, I'm turning it. Let go. Okay. Now Thank you. you. Can explain the painting. Okay. I, when Susan wrote to me, I didn't know how to do this because my joy was sitting in front of something and doing it. Jonale, if you push more, the uh, hearing goes. Okay. <laughs> okay. <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> Why don't I move my chair? Can I take this out? Yes. Jesse? I told you I feel like Frankenstein. Okay. There we go. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Is it still in? You're good, you're good. <laughs> okay. Something happens when you are with a person. Something happens when you are in front of a building. There is a chemistry. And if you are not thinking about how you will do it, if you're not worrying about, about the weather, it speaks to you. By now, I am so used to paint. I am so used to doing a painting that I don't think. I just feel. And somebody asked me quite often to do a drawing of them without knowing them, and I can't. And so let me go back to this. Tell when I, this when I got this, painting, Mom. oh, when this. I was asked to do this, I couldn't because I, but it was so clean. It looked so immaculate in the buildings. The buildings were beautiful. Go on. Okay. And so Susan started sending me all kinds of information. And I finally said, Susan, isn't there somebody I can speak to who was there during Lillian Wall's time? I need, to sp I need to speak to somebody who is not beautiful, clean buildings, who only knows of the great things that Henry Street has done. I need somebody who knew Lillian Wald. And somebody spoke to me. I was given the number of a man named Richard. And I didn't know at that time that he was one of the children whom Lillian Wald saved his mother. And he talked to me about when he was a lifeguard 
and Henry Street. And suddenly everything was clear. I could do the painting. But now with this book, she feels the way I did. Read it because what they did was they looked at the world around them and they saw the non-inclusion and went in and made refugees learn how to earn money. Explain the painting, Mom. Grandma, give a tour of everything in the painting yeah. because people don't know it. Tell about everything in the painting. Okay, okay. First of all, they had nurses who climbed on rooftops to get there. Camp Henry, that's where Richard was a lifeguard. This, they taught people how to sew. They took immigrants, and here is Miss Wald. And here is Abron, that's one of the board members who was originally one of the children whose mother was saved by Lillian Wald. And so I put everything together. Anything else there? And the visiting nurses began that way. But what is the most important to me at this time, black people were not, went to the NAACP and allowed them to have the first meeting in one of these buildings. She was there. She, she helped the Chinese people who were suffering so much. Anybody in the neighborhood was included. And in this book, you will get the details, which articles cannot tell. So let me speak about inclusion. This is inclusion. Now when we do not allow immigrants to come in, now when we take the children away from people to, in order to prevent them from coming here, I need to speak. Now, how is my timing? Oh, you are good. Okay. You are good. And okay. some other people had some comments. Okay, after the comments, I want to say something else. Of course. And everybody, please feel free to ask Hetty questions. And Lorraine says, Hetty, Mark's mother grew up in an apartment on Henry Street off of Market. No. It, it was originally a stable, but that was before your time. I know, but, but if I could hear her stories, is she alive? Mark. Does Remember Mark remember? That? Does Mark remember stories that she told? Because Mark, oh. Mark is close oh, to me. Here, As a matter of fact, when he and his wife come to visit, they know I love deli bread. So they go to <laughs> Jewish delis and they bring me bread. Okay, let me say something which is very important to me. I woke up yesterday morning to 72 messages. All the people who want to speak to me, I can't. I can't and I cannot pick or choose because of the people. So, I need to have you forgive me. Just love me, write to me, and let me not answer because I am going to be 91 years old and my eyes are not very good so when I am at the computer the glare is not great for me so love me write to me and expect no answer my Jesse has has a tape on his cell phone and it says you could leave a message if you want to but I don't think I'm gonna answer so May I change that? And may I keep you forever for myself? And write those messages.
but please don't expect an answer okay you have a question I have a question yes you've been talking a lot about learning to listen to your body and to rest and it needs resting and to stop things when you're tired of them even if you think you should do them could you tell us more about those insights because I think we all need that I would love to I would love to because it changed my life lately I lately means within this period of seclusion it me to think and I realized I multitask I do seven things at once and do them all badly and the person who suffers from is Jesse who's doing my website because I would give him I have a folder on every single painting on some of them I have two or three but for example the Lower East Side I did close to 40 paintings because it's the Lower East Side that to me is America and thank you Henry Street and so I decided first of all my daughter Joni is an executive at Fortune Society and I would call her I'd say Joni I need this or that and she would say does it have to be right now and I'll say no not really she says then let me write it down and the moment I can deal with it I'll call you and I thought to myself she's right and I said to myself that means she doesn't allow herself to multitask and I was looking out of the window and I saw a truck unloading next door to me and I watched and I saw the man took out one tool a big tool and took it into the building came back took another one came back took another one and I thought to myself if that were me I would take a wheelbarrow and put them all together and just then an advertisement came out where somebody who is carrying loads of things and dropping them is given a wheelbarrow so what he did he put everything into the wheelbarrow and then picked up the wheelbarrow and carried it and I thought that's me so I have begun to do use the wheelbarrow because it's necessary but that I'm better off if I pick up this piece of paper and deal with it and then put it where it belongs and suddenly so I shouldn't clap my hands because then I move this <laughs> but suddenly I found out I am able to do things so much better if I finish one job and don't allow myself to look at another one when we had our gallery we were just beginning and we couldn't hire anybody but we badly needed help and a young man named Leo Mack came and he walked in and he said could I be hired I'm good with my hands and Eric said I'm sorry but I can't we just opened I can't afford to hire anybody Leon came back week after week and said Hedy we can't afford to let somebody like that go and we hired him Leon Mack never made mistakes and one day I said to him about a frame being the wrong size fault and he said because if the size is length by width I do the length first and then I don't look at the width until the length is done and then I go to the next measurement so I know I will never make a mistake Leon did not double task and years later somebody called me from the senior citizens where I was taking exercise classes 
and said, there is somebody named Leon Mack. He said he used to work for you and Eric. Is that possible? And I said, yes. He really is who he is. And Leon's son came. And my daughter and I met him in a diner. And we hugged each other. That was before the virus. And it seems that his son doesn't must attack either and does things perfectly. But that's one of the things I learned. So, um, if I could just say, it is now the normal time to stop, but can we run 10 more minutes for other people's questions? I would love it. Great. So, Susan LaRosa said, you can wait, wait, who said so? Susan LaRosa. Great, okay. Said you can buy the house on Henry Street at a 30% discount from NYU Press. Just use the code Henry Street 30 in all caps. And it's already in its second printing. And Michelle says, I love the wheelbarrow image. And um, I'm so excited. And Mari Lou, your relative, our relative from Panama, wants to know if you could show in the future a drawing of Aunt Paula, your mother. I have a drawing I did of her. Somebody at the gallery said, could you do a woman who looks religious? And since we are, we are not very religious at all, I put a scarf on my mother's head and I drew her. And if Jesse will take a photograph, I have it in my house. Okay, Jesse? Okay, and we'll show it next time. Beautiful. Yes, because it is Aunt Paula. Because Aunt Paula loved Mary Lou and sent her drawings of mine. And Ellen, the author of this book, says, Hetty, you embody love. Then will you write another book? <laughs> I would like you to write another book very badly. When Jesse is finished with my website, that's a long way off because I didn't make it easy for him. But I would love you to write a book about the Durst family because I once read an article about a man who has a who has books of the lower, of old buildings. He's in the building trades. And, and that he has a library of wonderful books about buildings of New York City. And I thought, someday I'm gonna get the courage and I'll call him and ask if I could come and see some of those books. But I didn't because because if I didn't meet him on the street I wouldn't talk to him because I'm embarrassed and then when I did the archaeological dig for Goldman Sachs they asked me to do a series of paintings for them and the first one was of where 85 broad would go up and that's, it was going to be an archeological dig. And Eric said, don't sell that painting. We need that for ourselves. That'll be historically important. And so I met, I met this wonderful woman, Nan Rothschild, who was the head of the dig. And I said, Nan, I can't do it, but you love buildings as much as I do. There's a man who has a library. Why don't you, it was written up in the New Yorker. Why don't you call him and go, you have a title, you're the head of the archeological dig. You can call and go see those books. And she said, sure, I could do that. What's his name? And I said, Seymour Durst. And she looked at me, she said, Hetty, he's my, when do you want to meet him? And I said, you're well, he came to where I was working, 
And if ever you had a mentor in life, he explained buildings to me. He explained most of all about about being homeless in New York. He and his family were philanthropists and did things. And he explained to me how people live in one room and they have a bed and the stove is outside and the bathroom is outside. And he wrote letters to the New York Times. And I am writing about the Durst family because I cannot write the way you do, but I could introduce you to the people whom I met through Seymour Durst. And I would love for you to write a book with the same feeling that you have for the Henry Street Settlement. Mm -hmm. Should I read you some more things that people also said? I'm retired. <laughs> um, Michelle says, I remember your grandma, Ken. And um, Michelle says, you like your children embody love. And Vicky says, you are truly, oh, Truly a wonderful blessing to all, and I love you so. And um, I'm going to get a swelled head. <laughs> Do you want to say anything else in closing? I love you all, and I thank you so much. And please keep writing, and as Jesse says, don't expect an answer. But I love, I love your writing. Thank you.